Welcome back to Let's Play Tintin, Prisoners of the Sun. Last time we stuck on board the cargo ship Petrochemat, bound for Peru, and discovered Professor Calculus on board. Unfortunately, the crew then held us up at gunpoint, we were forced to dive over the side of the ship in order to escape, and the crew very helpfully shot at us while we were swimming towards Haddock and Snowy. In short, this is the worst cruise Tintin's ever been on, and he should immediately ask for a refund. Also, I like how it takes Tintin roughly 30 seconds to uh, explain what's going on here, whereas it took me less than half the time, almost. So much for Belgian efficiency, Tintin, Christ. So our heroes are now on board this train, heading towards the Peruvian town of Uega? Uega? Jaguar? I have no idea how you pronounce the name of that town, okay? And of course, like in everything else involving kidnappers and trains ever made, the villains uncouple the carriage that our heroes are in from the main body of the train and, make, and try and make good on their escape. And all these predictable shenanigans unfortunately lead to the worst stage, or one of the worst stages in the entire game, certainly. Infogrames calls it the coach. I call it the goddamn nightmare, because seriously, this stage does not make for fun times, especially when you're trying to do it while commentating live. Maybe I should have done this post-commentary, but you know what, it's too late for regrets now. So as you can see, we are on the back end of the train as it's hurtling across the mountains of Peru. And we have to hang on these side rails here in order to avoid this suitcase that's sliding around the floor, although curious that you can actually touch it while it's stationary and not take any damage. And that's what happens if you go on the side rails in the tunnel, you fall out. You know what, I'm going to keep that in there because uh, A, that's kind of funny, and B, I'd allow myself to die once on this stage anyway, if I'm being honest, because I went in it with, with less than full health, and this is difficult enough even with full health. So with three hits instead of four, can you imagine how difficult this is? So you're going on the left and right side rails here in order to collect time power-ups in the form of golden watches. Now looking at the top right hand corner of the screen, I'm not falling out again, Look at the top right hand corner of the screen, you might think the time limit doesn't look that particularly harsh. And normally you'd be right, except for the fact that if you miss even a single goddamn watch, the time limit clock goes into a sort of cardiac arrhythmia, starts freaking out, and you will very most likely die from a time over, unless you're very fortunate and there's another watch around. The, the, the first and second pass of the stage maybe aren't that bad, but the third one is a goddamn train wreck. And it's also very easy to dive straight out of the train. And the major problem I have with this is that you kind of have to take a hit in certain places in order to get to the time power-ups, because of course that's what kills you more often than, than the suitcase lying on the floor. Cra this is the most deadly piece of luggage since the one featured in Terry Pratchett's Discworld. Fortunately, we're almost at the end here. The, 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 re the real problem I have with this stage is that the suitcase can still hit you while you're on the side rails. If they'd taken that out, this would have been actually kind of fair. But as we pass through the third tunnel, we're done with this travesty. That stage was quite literally a train wreck. Ho, ho, ho. Now I have a machine gun. I don't really. Don't panic. <laughs> and these two brilliant cutscenes show us what happens next. Tintin climbs out of the uh, train and he's falling in the water. And that was a terrible... Peter Sellers impression and I apologize deeply for that. Deeply. Okay, so now I've just embarrassed myself in front of all the sundry here on the internet. Let's move on to this stage. Now I kind of like like much like in Tintin's a bet, Infogrames made an entire stage out of a very short scene. Of course in Tintin's a bet they made an entire level out of the Mongolian market the third level of the game in fact, and here they make an entire level out of Tintin searching in the town that I can't pronounce for information on calculus. But I kind of like it. These poncho wearing guys are much like the guys on the boat, in as much that they can't actually instant kill you. There are enemies later on that once again, like the blue guys on the boat, will instantly kill you. Well, they'll actually take you prisoner, but you'll lose a life, so it might as well be an instant kill. These dogs are not too hard to avoid. And even though he, that guy says aura, he can't take you prisoner, I believe. I've never been hit by him, so I wouldn't know. Then we have a, a tiny bit of a puzzle here. And the puzzle basically just involves throwing bales of hay. Not really a puzzle, per se, but 
not too bad. Another thing that's not too bad about this stage is that they actually give you plenty of chances to replenish your health should you have lost a lot on the train stage. Which, again, is a nice touch. Yeah, set parts of this game... That's not a nice touch, that's me screwing up. <laughs> Be right back. Fortunately, the margin of error there on that jump isn't too hard. The time limit is quite gen genuous, so you get... Genuous? What the hell? The time limit is quite generous, so you can mess up that jump a couple of times and still make the end of the stage. And now we have the closest thing Tintin Prison of will ever come to a boss battle. This big bullying Peruvian man has been beating up this kid that's now crying, and he will try and punch you, but if you press X, the stupid idiot will miss and punch the wall. That's all you have to do to win this fight, it's just Matrix dodge. And once he's punched the wall four times, that's it! He goes off to the right hand corner of the screen to lick his wounds. We follow him, and we get talked to by a mysterious voice in the bushes. God, is that you? No, 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 this is not Moses in the Burning Bush. This is Tintin. And it's actually that kid that we, I suppose, rescued from that man that was beating the hell out of him. For some reason that wasn't even disclosed. Yay for violence against madness in video games! So in this cutscene, we're introduced to our saviour, I guess. This is Zerino. And Zerino acts as Tintin and Haddock's guide through Peru. Because I suppose he owes us a debt for saving him from the guy that was beating him up. Unfortunately for Zerino, this means that he gets kidnapped immediately after in the very next cutscene. And we have to go and rescue him, which is not unreasonable, really. I mean, how else are we going to get through Peru without a guide? Now, I don't know the official name of this stage either, but I'm just going to call it The Mountains. The Mountains is both good and bad as a stage. It's good because... You can jump immediately on dropping to two sorts of spikes. No, no. It's good because... Well, it's not too difficult for the most part. But it's bad because there are a lot of blind drops. And here's the, other reason why, here's the other reason why it's bad. These goddamn enemies. As you notice, they're very similar to the poncho wearing guys. In that... Well, they're the most palette swaps, in fact. But these guys can indeed take you prisoner. Unlike the poncho wearing enemies in the... Patrick Mount level and the one we've just been in. And this jump's kind of tricky and I've kind of made it worse for myself by... Uh, you can actually trap that guy with the stone, which is what you were meant to do, but uh, I seem to have got away with it, so yay for me. Anything over to the left here? No. If you know where to go, this stage is not too hard, apart from one... I'm gonna, uh, now I've just said that, I'm going to die, aren't I? How the heck? Crawl over to the uh, left here. There is actually a nice little hidden thing that you can get. What you need to do is uh, fall off this ledge. Yes, that's perfect. Uh, what you need to do is jump on this rock. It will create a hole, and there you go. There's a, a hidden life. And we're back to five. I think the maximum for extra lives is five, but again, I'm not certain. How the hell did I survive that? Laugh of the gods, I guess. Laugh of the freaking gods. Yeah, this stage is not too bad, apart from the, the bits here where the poncho guys can take you prisoner. And there he's trapped, so he cannot take us prisoner ever again. Well, unless I die. And I'm kind of hoping that doesn't happen. You also need to use up to haul yourself up some of these ledges. It's kind of not explained when you need to do it and when you don't. By the way, take a detour here for, for uh, a health power if you need it. I, and then immediately lose it. Good job. Oh, god damn. My playing has not been the greatest today. But you know what? This is going so much better than the other takes. Regardless. Uh, can I hold myself up this one? Yes, I can. This is the, the trickiest bit of the level. It's the end of the level. What you need to do is not that. You do... <laughs> oh... It was all going so well, and then I go and do something stupid, like jump into a gun-toting Mexican. Or Peruvian, whatever. Be right back. Okay, let's try this again. What you're supposed to do is stay on the top here. Then you can jump to this ledge here. Careful, because it crumbles underfoot. Now, this is kind of tricky. You've got to time it so that this guy 
can't catch you when you make a run for that little ledge. Because he's going to turn the moment you go. And that was kind of close. Jump on this boulder and you can complete the level. But here's my advice. Take a massive leap of faith. Otherwise you're going to fall straight into that chasm that's opened up. And here's Serenio having been beaten up and tied to a llama and left for dead. And that's the end of the stage. And that's going to do it for this video of Let's Play Tintin Prisoners of the Sun. I'm going to stop the video right here because the next stage is a doozy for all the wrong reasons. So I hope you enjoyed this. Join me next time for, among other things, fun and games with a giant bird of prey. Until next time, bye for now. Okay, let's try the final challenge again here. Or not, because he can just touch my toe. How could you take me prison when all you touched was my toe? God damn it! If, if you were immune from the effects of the suitcase, while well, you were the... Huh. Alright, let's try and bait him to come into... Yes, alright, Zerino, I get it. Let's try it. No. No, 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 no. See, there you're safe. There you miss a clock because I'm an idiot. And time, 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 time. Gah! But really, after, after the horrors of the coach, the, the following two levels after that are uh, a nice change of pace. Oh god, that guy is another instant kill enemy. And this is one that you have to... Mother of a fuck!